Hello, for those who don't know me, my name is Paige and I am a second year at uh, AHSS, which is the Humanities, Art, Social Sciences, I do animation and illustration. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about flags, pronouns, identities and how that like we can reclaim different expressions that were possibly kind of misconstrued in the past and the history, a little bit offensive, but now we've kind of reclaimed it as our own little beautiful expression. Um, um, this is a completely safe space, confidential, inclusive, uh, and any opinions are welcome and valid and appreciated. Um, and it's a little bit interactive. Towards the end, we've got a big activity going. Not big, but it's a little creative. You can get pens out, paper, draw some nice things, and kind of get your thoughts out from this lecture onto paper. Yes. Paige is also the LGBT rep for Cambridge Campus at Students' Union as yeah. well. So wears many, many hats. Um, All the hats. Yeah. And... I'm Joe. Um, I work at the Students' Union at ARU, but uh, I was also in AHSS um, when I studied here in 2016 to 2019. Uh, I did my degree in politics here, um, and I've lived in Cambridge ever since I came to uh, ARU. And now I do lots of various little LGBT activity bits and thinky bits. Uh, I work as part of Cambridge Pride. Um, I'm at, I stage manage the community tent of Cambridge Pride, and I run a little LGBT night over the road once a month as well. Um, at six six bar, where I also work. Where, where <laughs> another, also hat, works. another hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, Luke. Yes, uh, my pronouns are they them. Thank you so much. Uh, mine are also, but as long as you aren't offensive, then you carry on. Call me whatever you want. Can I, can I just? Um a quick mention, this will be a out, but we are recording this session, so we just want to record the talk of it, everything that you say, and we'll take, so they'll take the questions at the end, so that you can ask the questions that you want, don't I feel like you've been inhibited in any way, because you've got the camera, we'll edit that bit out at the end. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we as a community can use flags, words, labels to express our identities, sexual orientations and genders in a way that doesn't include derogatory terms or names. So we've got a whole group of beautiful flags here, nice and colourful. Uh, some of these are identities, some of these are sexualities. So sexualities, we've got gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, uh, and then the gender part, we have non-binary, transgender, intersex, um, which is really important to know because our world is constantly changing, constantly growing. Identities are constantly changing, constantly growing. Uh, we're slowly gaining rights to these identities and expression is completely important because otherwise people are, you know, oppressed. We don't want that anymore. Um, these aren't all of the flags, obviously. There are hundreds now, but I figured I might as well focus in on a few of them that are probably the most prevalent in our uni uh, and stuff that needs to be mentioned out and around because, as you may know, there's been like a rise in hate crime, hate-based activity, uh, all of that nasty stuff that we need to conquer as not just a university, but as a community. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's really interesting kind of looking at identities and orientations and things like that, particularly now after, um, I don't know who, who knows about like the census data um, in the UK, so that kind of uh, every, every few years, that collection of information about every resident in the UK. And for the first time ever, um, you know, identities, like sexualities and identities was published as a part of that. Um, this year, and Cambridge in itself, despite being uh, a very small city, um, you know, sort of smaller than, Nor I grew up in Norfolk, so like smaller than Norwich, um, has one of the highest concentrations of LGBTQ plus people um, in the UK, and that's sexualities and identities as well. Um, so we have this really, really diverse and mixed community here, and clearly these people exist, and we've all kind of like congregated in one area. Um, and it's important to thus actually kind of give people a way to identify, because for a long time, um, you know, sort of finding that thing was a struggle for me. And sometimes these identities can necessarily feel a little bit fixed, can feel some, like something that you kind of like have to um, assign yourself to, and it's a bit rigid. But I think. Um, particularly with the word queer here, the like, kind of fluidity that comes with that. Sometimes we do need something to anchor ourselves to for a bit whilst we're figuring it out, but then we realise that we can actually be as fluid with these things as we want. Um, and the reclamation of words and seeing them for what they are and how we can use them to make things work for us is really important. So, obviously, most of you have had, you know, the insult, queer, you're queer, you know, all of this 
gross things, uh, but recently, over the last few years, uh, I'd like to say our community has kind of reclaimed this word. Uh, by definition, in the dictionary, it is uh, strange or odd from a conventional viewpoint, usually different, singular, or of a questionable nature and character, suspicious or shady. Um, but I feel like our community has taken that as a, I don't know, it's a bit of a hit out of what would be conventionally regular. Why would you want to be regular in this world? I mean, especially when it comes to fluidity, gender, sexuality, I think there shouldn't really be a regular definition because everyone is so unique and different that we've reclaimed queer in our society as almost an ownership of our identity nowadays. Um, but our aim as a community is to increase knowledge, acceptance and education on different identities as well as helping you educate you on things that you may not know. So where if you meet someone who has a different identity to you, you may know you may know what it means, you may not know what it means, but I think our aim here is to more educate you on things you may not know that like your ignorance may affect other people, but it may not, uh, so we're just trying to teach you how to redefine your identity. So I identify as non-binary, which I have they them pronouns, well I use all of them as long as you don't mean it in an offensive way. Um, and I have reclaimed that word queer for myself, as I call myself queer often, um, as, I don't know, it's just more of a comfortable term for me, and it's very, what's the word? I guess it allows for an existence outside of something that could be considered quite rigid. Yes. You know, sort of, um, you know, and I think that's that's a that's a big thing that's kind of like I mean, if anybody kind of is familiar with the discussion around sort of like um, you know bisexual identities, um, you know, big big discussions about you know saying like you know bi people do exist, and that's not necessarily to act within you know sort of be transphobic to say that there's only that oh you're bi so you would say there's only two genders like no this term can be fluid and it can mean what it needs to mean for a person and somebody's kind of like journey through sexuality and identity is is very much a journey you know we don't i i identify as bisexual for a very long time um and then that's moved beyond for me now i i see myself as being pansexual because i find kind of anybody quite i can be attracted to anybody beyond their kind of identities and that shows that you know we're not kind of contractually obliged to follow to our you know our identities and our sexualities whatever they may be we are allowed to pick things up you know maybe play with them for a moment have a look at them see if they work for us if not maybe put them down pick something else up and have a look at it and i think that's why i know for i mean for Paige, myself for many of my for my friends for my partner um, as well, um, we often quite like the word queer because it is, sits outside of what can be quite a rigid format, you know, quite rigidly defined, whereas this word queer is very much like, oh, it can kind of mean what you want it to mean for you. You know, you could use it to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a queer man in the sense that I'm a, I'm a homosexual man, I'm attracted to other, other people who identify as male, or it can mean I'm, you know, I'm a queer person, you know, I'm somewhere amongst that spectrum as a human being, um, where that sits I, I don't need to really define and I don't feel the need to define that and I think that's why it's such an interesting term and how its reclamation has been I think particularly good for, um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm generalising a lot here, but um, for younger people where we're kind of, um, we're in uh, I, I did an interview for, um, for, for a radio once um, and the, the person I was doing it with describes Cambridge as having a queer renaissance uh, where kind of a lot of uh, not just art and nights out but also lots of very educational talks um, stuff like this but also uh, for history month from Cambridge University as well there was things on like butch identities like butch lesbian identities and uh, queer medievalisms you know kind of like times where historians have maybe said oh they were good friends um, in a piece of artwork that clearly kind of showed some kind of relationship um, beyond that um, and for young people, thus kind of like being able to play around with identities and sexualities a bit more, not having to go, oh, I'm trans or oh, I'm gay, but having to go, I'm queer, and that will do for now um, in this mixture of various other things that we've got going on, it's higher a education. a beautiful blanket work. term for, <laughs> for everything that is a little bit different to what used to be normal, mm. um, which is kind of good because we've reclaimed that as what used to be an insult, and now we own the word as like, yeah, we're queer, we're irregular, what's the issue? We belong in this world just as much as everyone else. 
Uh, and if you've got an issue with that, then that's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's, uh, that's basically my talking. Um, so I'm about to put a few tables together, I'm going to roll out a big scroll of paper, and I'd just like you all to, you know, express yourself, vent, draw, paint, doodle, you know, draw over your hands, draw some flowers, you know, <laughs> just kind of express yourself about your voice, your expression, your identity, what you've learned or what you already know, um, and kind of your defining identity visibly that I can see and appreciate and compliment. Really? Mm. Just make it look real nice. Yeah, I think it's a really good opportunity to kind of like very tactilely put down how you see things and how you kind of experience things. Um, I always, um, I have a big thing about uh, like um, I hate sort of silent conventions where kind of like we all think like oh yeah we've agreed to this thing but nobody said it out loud. Um, I really like um, you know when I say something to my partner I'm like I know you know this but I need to say it out loud so it's there and so we kind of like felt it and I think writing stuff down can help with that or drawing stuff as well because you kind of like feel like you're at a starting point and once you suddenly something develops on from that. Um, almost like a conversation that you're having with yourself. Um, so, yeah, if, you, if you're not a, a, like me, not at all artistic in any way, shape or form, do write something down. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, art, no matter what your skill is, is such a good outlet for your thoughts, your feelings, uh, your expression, because everyone can look at art, everyone can appreciate art, everyone can partake in art, hence why we've got this activity here, so that you can, you know, express yourself mm. in a way that isn't just words because art you can remember art you can save art you can reminisce you can analyze words is a little bit more difficult hence why we're going to make some some beautiful pictures and words on this long bit of paper that i'm about to put tables together and place around <laughs> can i just say thank you both so very much for coming today and being so open with everybody here and giving this really clear um idea about how you can be who you want to be. You don't have to identify directly with anything until you've figured it out for yourself and that the there is a term there that can be used if one wants to or not, but this is you know, it's giving like a, a possibility of thinking openly about these things. And I feel also that you've given us a lot to think about with the different words and the flags. I'm sorry for the people who came a bit late and perhaps didn't see the slides. We could perhaps go just show the slides again from the beginning just so you get an idea of where it came from. Um, I don't know if you want to just say, because they did say on your last slide there, any questions and you move to the mm. next bit. So I thought maybe if you go back, just show yeah. through yes. again so they're trying to read it. Yeah, if anybody kind of has an experience or or a thought maybe that they want to pose um, because like we said you know this is this is a safe this is a safe space um, not just in terms of like inclusion as well but you know this is a, this is a place for questions um, without without judgment um, you know understanding we are in an educational environment we are in a higher education institution and thus you know we're here to learn and develop um, and I'm always I you know I always say like you know I you know I will try and answer your question or I'll tell you if I can't because it's a bit too personal or a bit too much for me and that's fine it's okay to ask um, just don't push me for an answer <laughs> <laughs> and, and people you, you share or you don't have to share but you can just be a part of the activity and see how you want to do I mean this is open for staff and students it's for people who are queer if that's the term you want to use or not so it's just for everybody to explore and to understand better and to learn so this is I just want to say quickly also this act, this um, event is part of a wider activity called the seeing myself program which is in the Faculty of Arts Humanities and Social Sciences we um, explore all different parts of um, diversity and equality around race equality uh, gender identity and um, also for disability and various other areas, but this is the first creative workshop we've had. So we haven't done the creative bit yet. Not the last. <laughs> um, just introduce myself. I'm student uh, student engagement manager for your faculty or for the Faculty of Arts, Humanities, Social Sciences. My name is Karen Sturt. This is Beatrice Inej at the back here, who works tirelessly on the AHSS newsletter, which comes out every other Monday, and where there will be a review of the event 
with the video of the um, talk. Like I said, we will edit out any bits where there are interactive questions and answers, so feel free. Anyway, I will stop there because I've said mm -hmm. enough. But do, does anybody have any questions?